team was tasked with modeling slash visualizing the fluid flow around a set of tandem turrets on the aft fuselage of a modified Gulfstream G550 business jet. The objective of the project was to analyze the effects the turrets will have on the loading and aerodynamics of the aircraft. This involved printing scaled models of the modified jet and using those 3D printed models in UGA's high-speed water tunnel. Two separate models were printed for two methods of fluid flow visualization, multi-dye injection and particle image velocimetry. Multi-dye injection is accomplished by using dye to visualize flow patterns from various locations and yields qualitative data. BIV traces particles in the water using software and yields quantitative data about the flow. We had to make some modifications to the model to allow for the internally routed dye tubes. We hauled out the inside, created 12 3200ths of an inch injection points on the rear fuselage, and created a hole on top of the canopy for the tubes to enter the model where it would not impact the flow of the area of interest. We used two different pieces of equipment to inject the dye. For the multi-dye experiments, we used a gravity-fed system. For the dye to inject correctly in this system, the tunnel must be run at very low velocities. There are six reservoirs of dye that connect to six quarter-inch Tigon tubes. There is a tube step down from quarter inch to 32 hundredths of an inch, which flows into a T-splitter, allowing us to reach 12 simultaneous injections. The tubes then enter the model and are routed and attached to their respective injection points. We also used a pressurized canister to inject the dye. The advantage of this system is that we have more control over the injection speed of the dye and can run the tunnel at higher speeds. However, we can only test up to two points at a time using a single canister. The biggest drawback of dye flow visualization is the flow speed. The water must be moving below about 20 inches per second to avoid rapid diffusion of the dye. The dye also must be injected at the same velocity as the water tunnel. This means we will have a much lower Reynolds number than the aircraft would have in flight, but the experiment still yields valuable qualitative information regarding the flow and flow interactions. Unfortunately, we do not have time during this video to analyze our results in depth, but we do in our final paper. Here is a preview. Here we can see the dye coming straight off of a tube attached to the bottom of the fuselage fairing. You can see the flow separate off the forwards turret and reattach to the aft turret and then separates again. Here we see injection points A, B, C, and D running simultaneously. We can see they are laminar until the flow reaches a point below the end of the pod. They begin to separate and fully separate after the forwards turret. Some parts of the flow from A and B shed vortices that become entrapped under the thin connecting the pods of the fuselage. All the flows are entrained after the forwards turret. Here is a video of us performing multi-dye injection with 12 points running. We analyze these results in depth in our final paper, but here's a sketch of what each flow surrounding the turrets does. Here we see E, here we see F, here we see G, here we see H, here we see I, here we see M, and here we see L. From our results, we can see that the flow between the turrets is very slow and almost motionless. This indicates that the two turrets can essentially be considered one object because of the way the flow moves over them in the dead zone between the turrets. Our second method of flow visualization around the two tandem turrets is an optical method known as particle image velocimetry, or PIV for short. PIV systems directly measure two variables, displacement and time increment. Planar PIV systems are composed of a few key components, reflective particles seeded in flow, a high powered laser, an image analysis software, a lens combination to produce a continuous sheet of light illumination, and a high-speed camera capable of recording over a thousand frames per second at high resolutions. In our PIV setup, we designed and 3D printed various mounting systems in order to integrate our PIV components in and on the water tunnel. Our specific simplified planar PIV process is outlined as follows. Step 1. The fluid was first seeded with 50 micrometer polyamide tracer particles, which follow the flow dynamics of the water in our water tunnel. Step 2. Our 1.2 watt laser pointer was split into a sheet of light by a cylindrical lens configuration. In our project, the lens configuration is as follows. First, a lens with a 60 millimeter focal point, then 100 millimeters, and then 200 millimeters. Step three, our tracer particles were then illuminated by our laser sheet. Step four, our GoPro camera captured video of the illuminated particles movement about the two tandem turrets. Step five, all captured frames are then uploaded into a PIV analysis software, in our case, PIV Lab, where the displacement of particles were analyzed and usable data was provided. PIV analysis most definitely provided us with qualitative results. Notice the turbulence and vortices about the forward and aft turrets in this video. But due to limitations with our camera, our team has run into a few problems with analyzing our captured video in PIV Lab. Therefore, our quantitative results are still pending. However, despite not yet receiving quantitative results, I would like to point out that our team was still able to successfully assemble an affordable and easily replicable PIV system.